Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another one. Last Friday of February. Didn't I tell you this month was going to fly by? It always does. It's a quick month, a short month, even though it's only a couple days. Um, you got to pardon me if I have a little cat hair on me. My, uh, my little buddy, Teddy. You remember Teddy. He was the little kitten that was running around on the porch a while back. And well, look how big he got now. He's bigger than... All his uh, brothers and sisters. He's a little monster, that guy. But he loves hugs. Guy loves hugs. So when you go up there, you got to stop and give him a hug or else he'll be crying the whole time. Um, got a couple projects today I was looking at. I'm going through. You know what's funny? When you, it's a rainy day and good day to be in the shop. And I was down here looking around. I said, what do I feel like doing today? And came up with a, you know, you pick up something. You say, oh, it's, that needs paint. Today's not a good paint day or this or that. I found two good projects that uh, look like they'll be fun today, and let's get right to it and show you what okay. we got. Okay, what I picked out for today, a couple tools that really look like they'll come out nice, have fun job today. We're in the shop today, it's raining, like I said, so it's a, a good day to do a job that don't require any paint or anything. And um, here we have, I have a, a fondness for these, and like an alignment bar or drift punch or... Uh, you know, they, they go by a bunch of different uh, uh, nomenclatures. But what's interesting about this one here is the transition. It goes from round to like an octagon shape. It's a high quality tool. It just, you know, these come in so handy. I really could have used it the other day when I was doing Tom's torch to f straighten out that top. But mine was buried upstairs. Secondly, I found this in my dad's old toolbox from years ago. And uh, I said, wow, look at this. Probably German because Germans like these type of pins you know and it feels you know the handles are solid these pins always stay solid say what you will you know they might not be the best looking but these rivets always stay solid so I said yeah this be a nice little product because the tip is all screwed up right look at that tip you know the grind on it. <laughs> look at the grind on that tip but as i was looking at this i was like that's surprising i was i was surprised i'm sure as surprised as you are that's from china so uh all the more fun to have some fun with it, right? Let's get started. Okay, everything you see here was done with just a flap sander. So you see how versatile that tool can be. We did, you know, quite a bit with just that one tool. So now we're going to uh, get everything done with the uh, belt sander. We're going to finish up and you can see here, I still got the china. That should come out. It's funny how they stamp theirs deep enough. But And the tip, look at that tip. I was able to, uh, you know, do a decent job. You remember what it looked like before. So it's coming good. I'm very happy with it. Uh, these grips are all punky and stuff, but, uh, you know, I think I could save them. Let's go no, on. I've been looking forward to trying these out. You can see here VSM Abrasives Canada incorporated these from my good friend Abe Elias. He gave me these a while ago, and I, uh, I don't even know where Abe is now. He's roaming the United States, I think. He's, uh, <laughs> he sold his house, and he's roaming around like the fugitive. So, uh, hope Abe's doing good. We're going to try out his new belt now, these 80 grit. He always has great belts. Okay, while we're waiting for the shellac on that handle to dry, I thought we'd do a little show and tell. You know, we always like a little show and tell on Friday. Let's get right okay, to it. Okay, what you're looking at here is a Eagle Vintage, Eagle Electric uh, catalog number 475 Winker. And what this was, Winkers were another name for um, a bimetallic strip. Remember, we talked about that last time. Inside a device that would uh, would blink or would give intermittent service to whatever you plugged into it. It means uh, flashing. 
And uh, these were good around Christmas time. You would plug a light into here or something and it would blink or Halloween or all kinds of things. You, people used to use them for, you know, even traffic lights, car washes, things like that, all kinds of things. And um, what this was, like I said, a simple bimetallic strip. Now, before I show you what I'm going to do is you see the bottom here. Again, this is the way I got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the bottom with a little polish just to, before I demonstrate it. So to show you, and it always makes a better contact when you and clean it up. And there we go. Polished up a little bit. You know, patina is never good when it comes to electrical contacts. You can see here the inside's pretty clean. But uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to screw this into my bulb tester. And let me show you how now this Now it's works. interesting to note, as you can see here, it says 100 watts, 110 volts. And it says do not use any higher voltage. So we're going to keep it down to 110 volts. And 100 watts, uh, again, because it's bimetallic, you want to use close to what it's rated. I tried it with a lower wattage bulb, like a 7 watt bulb, and it just doesn't create enough heat to get that to flash. Uh, the other thing is, it says here, it takes about two minutes to start flashing. Very cool. Okay, now the reason we have a test, and I'm doing this in the bulb tester, is because uh, this is a vintage one, and it's uh, rated, says 110 volts. Now, we here uh, in the States, our voltage varies between 110 and 120, so I really don't want to be, it's a vintage uh and these are quite expensive. I don't want to be putting more than 110 volts in. So I got this set for 110 volts. We're going to turn it on, wait for the metallic, uh, the bi-metallic strip to heat up. And when it does, the bulb will start flashing and start working. It takes a couple seconds to warm up. And there we go. Now, um, as it warms up, and the, be the funny thing about bi-metallic flashers is because it's working off of a strip, the flashes aren't as exact like they would be with an electronic flash. You know, it all goes by how hot and cool it gets. And you remember the demonstration we did on that. But you could see it has a different type of flash than an electronic flasher. And you might remember years ago seeing flashing lights that had this similar kind of flash. You know, almost like if someone was flipping a switch on and off and wasn't exact. And I find it very charming when I see this flashing like this because, like I said, it reminds me of the old days when you would see flashes like that in storefronts and things like that. So that's the uh, Eagle Electric uh, Bimetallic Winker. Now, Eagle used to have a whole line of bimetallic products, and uh, the winkers were very popular for them. In fact, they used to sell winker buttons later on, and these were small buttons that you would put into the socket, an Edison socket, and screw the light bulb in on top of the button, and that would create a blinker. And uh, they used to use that for traffic lights and things like that, so... Um, those were very common years ago, but now have become quite collectible and, and somewhat expensive to buy. They also had bimetallic outlet uh, winkers that you would plug into the outlet, and uh, then you would plug your appliance or whatever into that, and it would blink whatever you had. Again, like I said, Christmas lights or whatever. Interesting line, bimetallic strips in early electric uh, appliances. Very interesting. That's what makes your toaster pop. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, everything is going good. We got a little bit of a threat of a snowstorm. Whenever we have a threat of a snowstorm, I like to have a, a breakfast of... I like to have a pancake for breakfast. And I like to put pecans and maple syrup on it. Mmm, it was delicious. And I make one big pancake. You know how some people, they make stacks or whatever. But I, I like it hot. You know, I like them... So I make one big one. The key to doing that is to use a low flame. This way it cooks it all the way through. And otherwise, if you ever tried to make a big pancake with a high flame, you just get a doughy inside. So it's uh, that's the key. But uh came out real good. And uh, I, I was reading the comments for the last video, and it was funny because they were, I swear that you will pick out, you as an audience, will pick out the most uh, minuscule items that I think that I'm getting over with. <laughs> and, and you, you know what you picked out? My overdubbing of the word orifice. And, uh, you, a couple of you said, Hey, what's going on? What are I'm going to have to explain that to you. Let's get to that now, first. Now, when we were dealing with, uh, Tom's lantern last week, uh, you see that little area there that's called an orifice, but as a kid growing up, I always called it an orifice. Okay. <laughs> because, when I, I, I had nobody to teach me this stuff, I had to read everything I learned. I used to read and all this. So 
Uh, when you read it, I, I'm not knowing any better as a kid. I thought it said orifice, you know, instead of orifice. And, and you know, let me just let me defend myself back then because here, let's look at this here. If I pick that word up and I say, what is that? It's rice, right? Okay, everybody agrees that's rice. Now we go down a little bit. Okay, we got mice. Okay, we're doing good. We got dice. Every So far, you're on board with me, right? Okay, here we go. You would say, okay, feist. So if I was reading it as a kid, I would say orifice, you know, because not knowing any better. But, uh, you know, you got suffice. We have sacrifice. So, you know, you can't blame me. But then you got words like office, you know, and orifice. So it changes. I didn't know that at the time. So sometimes I would slip out and say just out of habit because as kids, we used to, anytime we had to deal with this particular type of valve, I would say, you know, it could be the orifice, you know, and I might, I think I let it slip a couple times. And when I was reviewing the videos, I said, oh, they're going to jump all over me for that. So I had to overdub it. And that's why you heard the overdubbing and <laughs> me saying orifice. Okay. Is there anybody else that says it uh, or vice or maybe in the UK or something? Who knows, right? But that's why that happened. But you guys catch everything. Now, while we're on the topic of uh, orifice, you know, this is one of the first torches I had. And I'm telling you, everybody should have a propane torch, at least in the house. So it's really a good item to have. But um, what happens is this is a simple one. These are, you can get these at any flea market yard sale because they don't have the automatic striker. So you can get these really cheap. And, um, how these op operate is they have a small orifice here and, uh, you see that there that screws in and out. Okay. You see that? And that little hole in there. Now, sometimes these get clogged. Okay. And that's why they might sputter. They not, might not work right. Now you can unscrew this here. And you could put it in a solvent, like a, uh, a lacquer thinner or something like that. But sometimes that's not enough because there's like a little bit of a chalky substance that gets in that little hole. So they, um, a lot of times when you buy this kit, the uh, burns kit, uh kit, you will see sometimes it comes with a little wire. And that wire is meant to clean out the orifice that you can pass it through. They sell wire kits for that, but a lot of times we don't have it. So let me show you what you have to do sometimes if you don't have that particular wire kit. Now, these type of orifices are found on all different types of, uh, of items we deal with every day. Our gas burners in our house and, you know, our torches and even your oil burners, although they call them... Uh, a nozzle when they have a fuel that goes through it if they change the name but it's the same thing it's what it is it's basically a uh, a valve that restricts it to come out to a small area like that hole now if you have to clean it out and you don't have the wires uh, sometimes you take a sacrificial you take one of your old wire brushes one that will have the proper size uh, wire and you'll uh, pull out or you could cut one of the wires out here I took one of the wires out of the wire brush and you could see just what it looks like usually they're bent in and pushed in like that so you pull one out and um, using a pair of plies and now this is the reason I never liked this is my great-grandfather's plies that I did this as a kid and um, I never liked the Lyman's plies that don't close all the way for this reason because I use it for something like this now you take your pliers here you take the little wire you press it into the hole of the orifice here and you work it back and forth uh, and then you will uh, using this in it, uh, with solvent uh, and then moving it around and you'll be able to clean out that hole usually and uh, get any caked up chalky substance whatever's in it out of there so uh this one doesn't come off but a lot of them screw out and you could clean it out nicely with a wire uh with oil burners things like that with nozzles they just replace them because the oil a lot of times over time can increase the the uh diameter of that hole and change your settings so but usually with gas you know you don't have that problem too much so but if you ever have to clean it out sacrifice one of your wire brushes and get a uh, piece of wire like that now you know my favorite part remember what these two tools look like before we started 
And we're calling this project done. Uh, both items came out nice. These aren't uh, difficult items to do, but they really are enjoyable. And this is these alignment bars come in so handy. And this one has nice lines with it, you know, and I was able to keep all them facets nice and clean everything up, get the back up nice. This little, this little uh, top here, it was you know, folded over a little bit, and I just wanted it to be safe, yet I wanted to keep that look. And I, I really enjoy the way that looks on top here instead of just having it rounded over you know it's a nice flat area for your soft blow hammer or whatever you have to use uh, how they measure these when you buy an alignment bar they usually go by the tip size and the length so this is about 12 inches long and it's got a quarter inch tip and uh, you can get these 3 8 would be a much larger tip made for heavier work but uh, this is a very good size uh, very easy to use next we have our uh, wooden handle Chinese screwdriver which I have to tell you I I actually like it and I want to give a special shout out and thank you to 357 Magdad because he's the one that uh, introduced us to putting a little bit of heat shrink on this uh, wire on these uh, Dremel wire brushes and that really helped for getting into that area that's about the only way I can imagine getting the rust out of those areas around the those rivets those two-piece rivets and uh, so this came out real nice. It's a uh, nice little screw. The tip was, you remember what the tip looked like, right? The tip was really messed up, but we were able to get it back. And uh, surprisingly, I, I didn't think I would, that tip was really messed up. And, you know, it's you can't put metal back. So getting that tip back was nice. So there was a nice job. A nice, uh, fun projects today really worked out well. Uh, by the way, the finish on that screwdriver handle is gunstock stain, followed by three coats of shellac, followed by one coat of butcher's wax. And uh, that should be good to go for many years. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>